couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to a very special lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. In this video I'm going to try to answer a very important question that people keep asking me. I've been asked this question for years, ever since I've started teaching. And it's this question. How important is theory? And the simple answer is theory is important, but the more complex answer and the more true to life answer is that theory isn't everything. The ear, ear training is far more important for the musician than theory. There are many, many, many musicians walking around this earth with amazing theoretical knowledge. They've been learning music for years on end, um, maybe their whole lives. And yet, they're pretty awful musicians. And I'll tell you why. Because theory isn't everything. Because knowing the theory doesn't automatically make you a musician. It makes you a musical technician, maybe. It makes you a good player, maybe. But it doesn't make you a musician. It doesn't enable you to actually make music and manipulate the music you know. And that's because most people concentrate only on the theory and not on the application of the theory. And the, in my opinion, the right way to learn theory is to apply every theoretical bit of knowledge that you learn immediately into your playing to see how uh, the compositions and the songs that you already know how to play use the theoretical knowledge that you've learned or the other way around or try to compose something using the theoretical knowledge that you've learned. You've learned a, a major scale, a minor scale, immediately try to compose using that scale. Try to hear what you can do with, the, uh, with that scale, with those intervals, with the series of intervals. Don't just play the scale up and down, up and down, all over the neck. That gives you nothing musically. It only gives you a technical skill. And as you know in music, the more technical you are, the less your music expresses. And that's the danger of too much technique and too much theory. It becomes too didactic. For example, almost all of jazz music today is too didactic. They, they call it improvisation, but they're actually just repeating lines that they've learned and practiced for years. So where's the improv in that? If you know what you're gonna play, if you know how it's gonna sound, it's not really improvisation. So the audience feels that as well. You can actually feel the difference between someone actually making up the music and improvising on the spot and somebody just repeating an improv that they've learned and manipulated over time. So you all know what I'm talking about. There are unbelievably gifted players who are incredibly boring. And the reason is too much theory, too much technique. So the, the danger in learning music too much is that it stifles your own creativity. Classical musicians don't know how to improvise. Ask a classical musician, even concert musicians, to improvise something for you, they won't be able to do it because the creative part of the brain is different than the didactic part. And that's why I advocate improvising and that's why I tell you to take my arrangements and manipulate them and turn them into your arrangements because I want you to be creative. I don't want to create an army of people who copy my playing. I want to create creators. I want to create musicians who in turn will create music that will entertain me back. So learning theory has to be accompanied by immediately applying the theory. If you learn a series of chords, if you learn um, chord shapes around the neck, if you learn chord inversions, try to immediately play around with them and see how they can connect to one another. See how you can lead one chord shape into a different chord shape, how you can jump around the neck, how you can create interesting transitions between the chords, how the chord shapes themselves are related. Try to immediately create little bits of music and apply the theory. Otherwise, it gives you nothing. Otherwise, you just know a rule. 
and rules in music are meant to be broken. And the more theory you know, the less chances are that you'll break the rules. All of, the, um, all of those epiphany moments, the, the orgasmic moments in music are wrong sounding notes. They're escaping the scale. And actually, the best musician example that I can give you is Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain uh, came, out, came up with some incredibly complex musical compositions. Lithium, the song Lithium, jumps between the major scale and the minor scale every few bars. Okay, from E major to E minor, back to E major, back to E minor. And in classical composition, and actually in the rules of composition, that's wrong. You can't use the same minor and major scale. It's a no-no. But hey, the guy was a genius. He heard it. And who cares if you can't do it? Okay, who says you can't do it? And he broke the rule and he came up with one of the greatest rock songs in history. And you can actually look at many, many examples of great songs and great compositions and you'll see that they jump around with scales, they turn minors into majors, they uh, change the chords from major to minor and back again, thus creating modes. And again, what is a mode if not a minor or major scale with a wrong note in it? The blues scale has the flat five. The flat five is a wrong note. It's a diminished note. So the wrong notes tend to be the best sounding notes. And that's why theory uh, usually follows the, the inventions, the breakthroughs. And then, for example, I'll give you one last example and then we'll finish the video. Um, there are certain melodic uh, transitions in jazz that you can do on 2-5-1 moves. Never mind if you know what a 2-5-1 or not. It's not the, the point here. And there are certain modes you can use and certain ways you can move chromatically and use the diminished scales and the mixolydian scales and all sorts of altered scales. And um, the altered scale itself, again, never mind what it is, if you don't know, it's not the point here. Uh, the altered scale itself is a scale made out of all the wrong notes. Okay, all the sharp nines, the, the flat nines, the sharp elevens, the flat five, all the wrong notes. Uh, were, gathered, were gathered together into a scale and called the altered scale. And then somebody had to explain it, and then they, they came up with this sort of convoluted explanation, something like, um, we're actually playing the 2-5 of the tritone substitution of the, the fifth of the scale. What? We're just playing the wrong notes and making them sound good. Ear? before theory. But theory is still important and theory can actually help you understand things. But if you learn the theory before you learn to hear it, it'll be 10 times more difficult. So first, learn to hear something and then see how the theory applies. Or learn the theory and then use that bit of knowledge to learn to hear it. Because if you can't hear it, you can't play it. That's the rule. Um, and I suspect that's why most, uh, most boring musicians with incredible technical skills uh, are so boring because they're not really hearing it. They're only playing according to rules. And that's a shame because they have such a gift and they're so incredibly talented, but they confine themselves to what's right and what's wrong. And in my opinion, that's not the way to make music. Music is supposed to be creative, not didactic. Um, so um, that's my two cents about it. So uh, take it or leave it. And uh, I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.